I'd like to tell you some origin stories. In a way, the Berkman Center is about identity, and our own is among it. We actually started as a center in an evidence class in which Jonathan was my student. This was a remarkable class. It was one of our winter workshop classes, three weeks straight. I'd received a grant from Steve Brill of $10,000 and used it to rent 20 Mac Quadra machines. Our class was in Austin North, amphitheater class, 120 seats, whatever. Eight times 20, no, we had 160. Oh my God, did we? Yes, we did. We formed the class into groups of eight and gave each one a machine and basically set them to work for three weeks. We were blessed with a winter snowstorm, the likes of which you have never seen. This place was buried. Nobody could move. So everyone just got together and worked and figured out what this thing was about. And Jonathan, he was like, I don't know, almost like Santa Claus. He would go through the snow to the different apartments where these groups had gathered and managed to get them started on whatever it was. I mean, this man, in case you haven't quite figured it out yet, is a genius. He just seems to understand everything, starting from bits and working on up. It's quite remarkable. And at the end of this three-week period, we brought all of the machines together in Austin North, and John wired them all up. So we had a network. And that was our first real exposure to the idea of network right there in front of us. The way this thing got started after that, Jonathan went off to clerk, clerk for a judge in Washington, D.C. And the idea formed of doing a center. And so when he got finished his clerkship, John came back here, but he had no office, no appointment, no place to live. So he lived with me and firm and shared my office 50-50 desk. And that was the first start of Berkman Center. <laughs> I did bring a 30-gallon hexagonal aquarium with me <laughs> without telling Charlie and just set it up in his office, having run it all the way from Washington off the cigarette lighter of the rent-a-van. <laughs> and uh, about two weeks in, Charlie said, we, we have to have a talk. I was like, God, am I, you know, what am I doing wrong here? I, this is all so new to me. Like, Fern says the aquarium smells. <laughs> <laughs> so I cleaned the tank. <laughs> well, in case you don't know, John in his youth was the sysop of sysops at CompuServe. How many know what that means? <laughs> well, that's smart. <laughs> <laughs> what it means is that he was the guy who had to resolve the disputes that arose amongst all of the other people who were leading discussion groups. He was like, he was like the senior dispute resolver. And he did this at some remarkably young age. I have the vision of John when he was first invited to Cleveland or someplace for the CompuServe conference. They had no idea who he was, except he was this figure on the net who was remarkable at being able to resolve disputes. And when they call him up to the podium, it was like, uh, and now Mr. Zittrin, and he's up there. <laughs> 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 oh, 
These are good times. How old were you, John? I was 13. I actually first met John, not here at Harvard Law School, but in Pittsburgh. I was invited. I used to moderate these Fred Friendly panels where you kind of have everybody around you do a Socratic kind of dialogue. His mother invited me. I, I had never met to Pittsburgh to do one of these things. Afterwards, John and I have our photograph taken. I hope that you'll find it and somehow distribute it to everybody. I found the video of the panel. Oh my God. Good, really? All right, so I mentioned the sysop of sysop aspect because it's very much what I feel the Berkman Center is about. It's, for that matter, very much what I think the Fred Friendly panels were about and what I think Harvard Law School is about. It's about dialogic education. It's about a vision of education that isn't reducible to a multiple choice question at the end. It's about argument, exchange, persuasion, being present, being able to sense. I'm a great fan of poker. I like it as a metaphor. Poker, you sit around a table just like this, and everybody's equal doesn't make any difference who you are or what you are. It all just comes down to how you play the chips. And really, that's such a wonderful metaphor for the law and for discussion in law and ways in which one can think about advancing strength and metaphors for credibility. That I've just always found it extraordinarily rich. And that initial kind of Socratic ambition for the Berkman Center was for me captured in the idea that cyberspace is a rhetorical space. It's a space of communication, a space of argument. It's got its structure, yes, but the content that flows through the network is rhetoric. And what we engage in is very much a search for what we think is true, but then also the ability to explain what we find in a way that is convincing to others that it is true. 